So my session being voted number one, at least I'm going to claim number one for right now. They put out the top ten yesterday, and I'm at the top, and it's not in alphabetical, it's not numeric, so I'm going to take that as a win, right? Uh, and I, I thought it was a, a joke. Uh, Kendrick Coleman actually tweeted it out first, and I thought he was messing with me. But it's, uh, I don't know, I, I was shocked, to be quite honest. It's, it's a pretty big honor for that. There's a lot of, like, Chad Sackatch and some of the best practices sessions are down on that list. I mean, that's a big deal. And I think it just shows, it kind of shows what people come to these conferences for. So when they did open submission this year, they put as, as uh, examples the top three sessions from last year, and I was on that list as well. And I didn't know that until this year, and I was stunned. So to do that and then get probably the top session this year is, is a big deal. And I think that it shows people come here for good content. Honestly, they don't come here for the marketing pitches and a lot of what's coming. You know, they come here to learn. And that's my sessions. I just had this conversation over in the hang space with guys that have, have done it last year. It shows that technical sessions with good content, less slides, because probably two thirds of my session on Monday, which I'm repeating today, was live lab right off my notebook. And I think it just shows that people, that's what they want to see. They want to get that in depth. They want to actually see it. They want to feel like they're getting an interactive you know, demonstration, not like a pre-recorded keynote demonstration. And I hope that you know, VMware kind of takes that to heart when they're planning sessions for next year and the year after. That's what your audience wants to see. And uh, you know, that's what I want to present. I'm much more comfortable getting up there with a lab it's risky. I mean, I had a couple issues with my MacBook before we started getting the video up there and getting some things done, but it's a high risk, but it's a really high reward. And again, that's what people want to come out here and see. So very honored to, to see that list. I mean, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So my session this year, again, kind of like what I've done the last two years, I'm a, I've got a networking background. When I came to virtualization, I do a lot of virtual networking stuff. It's just what I enjoy doing. So I've done those the last couple years. This year, it was just deep dive focused on VMware's distributed switch. Last year, I've done some things on Cisco's distributed switch. This year, I focused on VMware's. And luckily, it was great timing. 5.1 being released on Monday with some new features in it. I got to roll all that into my demonstration. And it was really cool being on the first day because I got to show everybody the new web interface and they haven't seen it. So it was like a lot of wow factor, you know, that just timing was a good thing. But I gave an end-to-end -end demonstration of the distributed switch, what you might want to do when you're deploying it, thinking about it, you know, things you might want to clean up before you move to it, what the benefits are, components. And then I gave a, a, a talk on how I do production migrations. You know, that's usually the sticking point for most people is it's, it's a high risk thing to start migrating your environment to that, to that different method. And so I walk people through how I do it, how I make it low risk, how I test, how I roll things over, very methodical. And honestly, it's the same speech I give in my advanced networking course that we've done. It's that same how to migrate an environment with minimal disruption. And uh, you know, the stuff, I want people to be able to walk away with things they can go back and implement right away. I don't want it to be like, yeah, that was great, in six months we'll be able to do that, or that was really good theory and architecture. I want things people can go back with and, and use right away. The advanced networking course is one I wanted to do for a while, and uh, it's, it's one of these things that there's a lot of um, underlying design and underlying you know, tweaking and tuning that can be done to VMware. And if you go to say, you know, if you're VCP and you go take VMware's install and configure course, they kind of, they show you vSwitches and then they kind of gloss over, by the way, we've got this distributed switch thing over here, it's really cool, you should check that out. But they don't go in depth on anything. But what I find talking with customers is, is a lot of times these guys come from the server side. They're Windows administrators or now they're VMware administrators. They know server hardware really well. They know how to, you know, deploy, they know how to provision, they know how to do operational processes, but they don't have a lot of that networking experience. And one issue that we see with VMware and consolidation is that line gets moved and they're responsible for more pieces of it, more of that interconnection between the two. So the idea for the advanced networking course was to kind of bridge some of those gaps and say, okay, here's some best practices, here's how we look at doing a design, here's how we implement networking on vSphere side, vSwitch is distributed, here's what you need to look at on your physical switch side, and these settings here affect what you do here. And that's actually a session I wanted to do this year at VMworld that kind of got declined was, you know, how do you connect those two together and what's the best practices for that? How do I configure teaming and hashing and all these little things that um, are simple but have a lot of dependencies back and forth with each other. So I go through a lot of that and then just your standard performance testing, troubleshooting, management and, and things like that. 
So right now I am working on a vCenter operations manager. I'm a big fan of vCops. I love the product from VMware. Uh, it's been extremely successful with our customers. The downside is there's not a lot of good information out on it. Uh, and so it's something I, I kind of push train signal to do. I was like, we need to get this course out there. And it's a, a com I won't call it a complete vCops course. And I always preface that with there's several levels of vCenter operations. You've got several different licensing levels. And the course covers standard, advanced, and a good chunk of getting people used to the enterprise, which is almost an entirely separate product. And as we say, that, that product is almost a bottomless pit. You can go as deep and complex as you want to go with any management product. So I could do probably two courses just on that easily. But most people want to see what's in the standard, what's in the advanced, really how it works and how to tune it. And then I always get the question, well, if I do the enterprise version, you know, how do I do customizations? How do I do application dependencies? So we go to that level and really it's a, okay, we bought advanced, maybe we want to upgrade to enterprise. Let me look through that and see how you do this. Is that something I want to dive into? Or do I want to use the advanced suite, which is really plug and play and real simple to use and, and, and uh, deploy? Or do we want, you know, what do we want to do? So that course runs through the entire um, advanced option set, how to configure it, how to pull data out of it, what it means, what it's telling me, and then how to customize some things. So one thing that we're really proud of at Vero is our Vero Madness Partner event. And we started this two years ago. We do it in March every year. It's, I'm, we're, I'm from North Carolina, we're based out of Carolina, so it's March Madness College Basketball. I'm a big Tar Heel fan. And we do this in March and it's got a basketball theme. And it's been called by several of our big partners the best partner event anywhere in the country. And uh, you know, Jessica's our, our marketing coordinator, our director of marketing now, and she's done a phenomenal job. So it's, uh, people have called it a mini VM world. I think that's being nice, but it, it's, it's a huge event that we are doing. And we're doing that again next year. And we just announced that it's in March. I think, I think it's March 21st, but I may be wrong on that, but it's gonna be in Raleigh this year. So we've kind of moved it around through the Carolinas for the last couple years. So it's going to be uh, over in the Raleigh area. I think it's going to be at the Durham Convention Center. And we're starting to get that together. One thing that I'm doing is now that I'm in a position of director of our data center practice is I'm really pushing to get even better technical sessions. I'm you know, looking at all the, the sessions that are being sent to us from our partners and going, I don't want your technical marketing session. I want stuff, again, that people can use and, and go back with. So we're, we're going to make it bigger and better this year, more vendors, more sponsors more labs, more good sessions. So anybody in the Southeast, I mean, I, I highly would love to see you guys out there. Whether you're a Vero customer or not, I don't care. It's a great event. It's a great place to meet people and see things. So we'd love to see people out there. So I'm a big proponent of social media, being the introvert that I am. It's a lot easier, I guess, to sit behind a keyboard than anything else. Uh, but I did my blog years ago. It's just jasonnash.com. And it's not always the most, you know, it's not a regular update. I go and burst this week. I'm doing a bunch on VMworld, and then sometimes it's other stuff. But it's really focused on things that we do at Vero, virtualization, storage, and networking. I focus a lot on the networking side. On Cisco, especially Cisco's UCS servers, I do a lot, a lot of posts on that. Uh, pretty active on Twitter. Uh, I get a lot of grief for my Twitter handle. Uh, it's uh, the Jason Nash, and that came about because the guy that has my handle will not give it up even though he doesn't use it and Jason McCarty at V Specialty at EMC one day said well you're the Jason Nash just use that and now I catch grief daily about that but uh, I get a ton of use out of Twitter it amuses me that people think that you know it's just for what I had for lunch and I actually wrote a blog post one day of you know how I use Twitter and what I get out of it for my job and work and meeting people and I've had a lot of great responses even my mother's like I didn't get it till I read that, and now she's on there doing stuff. So those are probably my two biggest outlets, you know, definitely Twitter and my blog. And uh, it, it's amazing the community that's out there, not just in my space, but almost every industry has a little world on social media that people need to learn to tap into because that's how you make connections now. I would not be sitting here talking to you and speaking at VMworld if it wasn't for those connections. So in my opinion, you're either doing it or you're getting left behind and you're gonna be part of that old generation.